Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series, part 4. In this part, we're going to add some menus and a health bar to our game, but before we do that, I want to tell you that I have changed my material mode in the end menu under shading, under display, to be GLSL in all my scenes, for personal preference, and that I am using Blender 2.6 revision 41226. So I have already created a menu in another scene that is called Intro, so we'll go there right now. And in this scene, you can see that I have three objects that are text meshes, and it's important that they are mesh because Blender won't, uh, because curves won't behave correctly in the game engine. I have a green plane, two lamps, and a camera. And what we want to do is that when our mouse is over the options, they go bigger by playing an animation. And if I click on it, uh, if I click on the buttons, it will play the game or it will quit it. So let us first create the animation. So we want this animation to play when our mouse is over the button. So I'll add the mouse sensor and I'll connect it to a action actuator. Now the mouse sensor has a mouse event drop down menu and all the options in it are self explanatory. So the one I want is called mouse over. And I want to play an action that is called mm, text action. The starting frame is 0, the end frame is 20. And I want the type to be flipper, so that as long as my mouse is over the, the text, it goes bigger, and as soon as my mouse is not over it, it plays reverse. So we'll try that right now, but if I press P, you can see that we have a bit of a problem, and it is that I don't see my mouse. So to fix that, I'll go in this render panel here, and in this display tab, we have the mouse cursor checkbox. And if we check it and press P, you can see that I now have my mouse when I start the game. And I can put it over the object, and you can see that it kind of worked, but it, it's very edgy. And the reason for that is that whenever my mouse is between the letters, Blender considers that it is not over them anymore, so it starts to play the animation in reverse. So to fix that, we're going to add an invisible plane on all the region we want to trigger this mouse sensor. And to do that, I'll go in Edit Mode, then Shift A to add a mesh, select plane. I'll rotate it on the x-axis by negative 90 degrees, so R, X, minus 90. And I want to rotate it on the negative 90 degree so that the normal of my plane is facing this way. Because if you don't know, each faces in Blender has what is called um, a normal. And the normal tells Blender what is the top and what is the bottom of the plane. So in Blender will only render will only render the faces that the top are facing the camera. So right now this is the bottom and it is facing the camera, so the plane won't be rendered in the game engine. However, it will still get detected by our mouse actuator uh, sensor, and that's what we want. So I'll scale it down on the z-axis, scale it down on the x-axis, move it there, and then if I press P to start the game, you can see that it works just fine. Next, we want that when we left mouse button click on this object, we start the game. So to do that, I'll add another sensor, another mouse sensor, and I'll leave it to left button, and I'll add a scene actuator, and I want the scene drop down menu to be set scene, and the scene option here to be level 1. And set scene will remove the current scene, and add the selected scene. So it will remove this menu and start the game. And I want to connect this mouse sensor to this scene actuator 
and this one too to the same controller so that our mouse has to be over the object and has to left button click. Now I'll rename my logic bricks so this one will be called LB, this one will be called mouse over, this one will be called text action and this one will be called equal level 1. And now I can collapse them. And now what we want is that this object, we want this object to have all the same logic bricks than this one. And it's, instead of recreating each of them one by one, what I'll do is that I'll select the quit button, then shift select the play button, and you have to be sure that the active object is the one with the logic bricks. Then I'll go into object, game, and press this copy logic brick button and now our quit button has all the keys our play button has and we the only thing we want to change is this same actuator because we don't want to start the game we want to quit it so I'll change the actuator type to be a game actuator and I will change the in this game drop down menu I will select quit game rename it quit, oh, quit, not queer, and I'll add a plane under it, like I did for the other one, and then if I press P to start the game and quit, press the quit button, you can see that it works just fine. And this is all for our menu. And since we're talking about menus, I want to tell you that I have also made a game over menu and a level completed menu that works, that both work the exact same way. Now we want to add a health bar, life bar. And we'll do that in our HUD scene or head up display scene. So I'll go there right now. And you can see that I have already made, uh, I have already made one. And this health bar is made of a green plane, on top of a red plane, on top of a black plane. And all these objects have a shadeless material, because I don't have any light in this scene. And uh, the center of the green object, of the green plane, is at the complete left of it, so that when I scale it down on the x-axis, it seems like it is being drained. And the way to do that is by going in edit mode, selecting the two vertex, uh, vertices of the left, shift S to add the snap menu, cursor to select it, and then outside it you can press Control alt shift c to open your set origin menu and select origin to 3D cursor. Now Control alt shift c is a bit of a tedious shortcut to remember, so you should have it on your transform in... oh, they remove it? oh, and this origin button here oh, origin to 3D cursor here you go now I'll replace my health bar like this and this green plane also has an animation in which at frame 0 it is completely scaled down and at frame 100 it is completely scaled up and what we're and the way we're going to set up this uh, health bar is by playing an action that will be controlled by a life property so that when the life property so that the when the life property is equal to 50 the frame of the animation is equal to 50 and our plane is called at 50% of its original scale. Same thing happens if the property is equal to 20 then the frame of the animation will be equal to 20 then only 20% of our green plane will be visible because it will be scaled down. So to do that I'll add a game property Call it life. Oops. 
life, set it to integer, and I want the default value to be 100. Then I want to play the animation each time the sensor is changed. So we'll use um, a property actuator, sensor, property sensor, set it to change, and select our live property. And we want to connect this to an action actuator. And the action we want to play is called um, live scale. And the action type we want to use is property. And we want to use the property called live. So now I'll drag this one to this one. And now every time our life is changed, we should play the the live scalp action accordingly. And now we want to affect this life. And the way we're going to affect this life is by using messages. Now technically the way we should do that is by using only one message. Look is by looking for only one message that will be called damage and in the body of this message there will be the number of damage or object or player would have been dealt. However, to access this value, we would need to use a Python script, and I don't want to use them for this series. So what I will do instead is that each time our player will be damaged, an object will send a message to our health bar, and the health bar will look out for one message for each type of damage that can be dealt in the game. So if our player can be damaged by 5, 10, and 30, well, we'll look for 3 messages that will be called uh, minus 5, minus 10, minus 30. However, uh, for this tutorial, I will only create the minus 30 one. And I'll leave you the other ones. So I'll add a sensor, message sensor, that will look out for a message called minus 30. And I also want it to be the name of my sensor. And we'll add a property sensor, actuator, sorry. Then we want the type to be the mode to be add. We want to add to live property. And we want to add minus 30. So in fact, we are subtracting 30. And now I want to test if this is working. So I'll change the controller type to be or. And I'll add a keyboard sensor connected to the R controller. And I'll press this Alt keys button so no matter what key I press, it will trigger the set, it will trigger this actuator. So if I start the game and I start pressing keys, you can see that it works just fine. Now we want this plane to change our scene to be our game over scene whenever it reaches zero. So to do that, we'll add a property sensor, set the, the evaluation type to interval, the property to life. We want to use a big minimum, so minus 9999, and a maximum of zero. So as soon as our life points become negative, something is triggered, and this something will be our scene actuator that will set the scene to be our game over scene. However, as I told you before, the set scene will only remove our head of display scene and add a game over scene instead of it. So what will happen is that we'll still have our level 1 scene that will play under it and we don't want this. So what we'll do is that we'll add another scene, actuator, set the type to remove scene and we want to remove level 1 and now I can connect this sensor to this actuator and this controller to this other actuator and I can start renaming things so life change Action, we'll call it life scale. 
minus 30 minus 30 this keyboard will be delete in no time life lower than zero minus level one equal game over life minus three and now if we try this you can see that it works perfectly so I'll remove this keyboard sensor collapse everything and the last thing I want to do is to go in my level 1 scene select this star and we want the star to change our scene to be our level completed scene whenever our player touch it. So we'll add a collision sensor, two scenes actuator, change them for set scene, remove scene. We want to set the scene to be level completed and we want to remove our head up display scene. We are looking for a property that is called player, connect this one to this one, this one to this one, rename this player, rename this equal level completed, rename this one minus HUD. And now we have, and now all our menus are set up and we have our health bar that is working. So that is all for this tutorial. We have talked about menus using primary mouse actuator sensors and health bar using actions, messages and properties. So I hope you have learned something from this video and that you have enjoyed it. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in part 5.